Hello, and welcome to A Priori Story Timeless. I'm here with Bob and Bob Bear, two pink birds for our story. I wonder if they can sit where, I don't know if you can be able to see them, but we'll see if they join us. <coughs> Today is a Iroquois legend uh, as adapted by Harriet Maxwell Converse. This is called The Spirit of the Corn. There was a time, say the Iroquois grandmother, when it was not needful to plant the corn seed, nor to hoe the fields, for the corn sprang up of itself and filled the broad meadows. Its stalks grew strong and tall and were covered with leaves like waving banners and filled with ears of pearly grain wrapped in silken green husks. In those days, Onata, the spirit of the corn, walked upon the earth. The sun lovingly touched her dusky face with the blush of the morning, and her eyes grew soft as the gleam of the stars on dark streams. Her night black hair was spread before the breeze like a wind-driven cloud. As she walked through the fields, the corn, the Indian maize, sprang up of itself from the earth and filled the air with its fringed tassels and whispering leaves. With Onata walked her two sisters, the spirits of the squash and the bean. As they passed by, squash vines and bean plants grew from the corn hills. One day Onata wandered away alone in search of early dew. Then the evil one of the earth, Hagwedatega, followed swiftly after. He grasped her by the hair and dragged her beneath the ground to his gloomy cave. Then, sending out his fire-breathing monsters, he blighted Onata's grain. And when her sisters, the spirits of the squash and the bean, saw the flame monsters raging through the fields, they flew far away in terror. As for poor Onata, she lay a trembling captive in the dark prison cave of the evil one. The evil one here is a twin of the creator God. She mourned the blight of her cornfields and sorrowed over her runaway sisters. Oh, warm, bright sun, she cried, if I may walk once more upon the earth, Never again will I leave my corn. And the little birds of the air heard her cry and winged their way upward. <laughs> they carried her vow and gave it to the sun as he wandered through the blue heavens. The sun, who loved Onata, sent out many searching beams of light. They pierced through the damp earth and entered the prison cave, guiding her back again to her fields. And ever after that, she watched her fields alone, for no more did her sisters, the spirits of the squash and bean, watch with her. If her fields thirsted, no longer could she seek the early dew. If the flame monsters burned her corn, she could not search the skies for cooling winds. And when the great rains fell and injured her harvest, her voice grew so faint that the friendly sun could not hear it. But ever Onata tenderly watched her fields and the little birds of the air flocked to her service. They followed her through the rows of corn and made war on the tiny enemies that gnawed at the roots of the grain. And at harvest time, the grateful Onata scattered the first gathered corn over her broad lands and the little birds fluttering and singing joyfully partook of the feast spread for them on the meadow ground. Thank you very much.